Pastor, why are, why are you preaching this series? Why aren't you just going? Why aren't you just every sermon on the fire of God? We're getting there. <laughs> but, but I feel like this is strategic. So the Lord is preparing us for what he wants to do. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The enemy has tried to fracture. And if the enemy can fracture, he can bring... Uh, he, can, he wants to fracture our minds, our hearts, our families, our relationships, our churches, our cities, our society. But the Lord, through this series, I believe, wants to bring wholeness and healing, not just to groups of people, but the Lord wants to bring wholeness to your mind. He wants to bring wholeness to your emotions. He wants to bring wholeness to your spirit. I had the, the privilege to be on a call with one of the leaders of the, the Brownsville revival. And so for about five years, Father's Day 1995 and five years after, they had services six days a week. Um, Four million people from all across the planet came to Brownsville, and you can still see the, the uh, many ministries and missionaries and different things that are the fruit of that revival. But I, I got to be on a phone call with one of the leaders of that revival, and what he was saying was that at this point in his life, he feels more healthy holistically. And so it was, a, it was, but that to say this, you can have revival but not be healthy holistically because you're leaning so much into the spirit that you can neglect your mind and your emotions and your body. And so one of the things that I feel like God wants to teach us through this series is that we're healthy in order to be able to receive the fullness of the move of God that he's going to bring us. The Lord's on that. And so if you're ready to be whole, if you're ready to walk with wholeness and healing in every area of your life, can you say amen? Amen. So this is what Jesus then says to you. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. All this is on your app. A lot of notes, a lot of good stuff. I encourage you to follow along. Uh, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them of all the commandments, not just the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about all the Levitical laws, about food and clothing and regulations and Sabbath and everything, about 613 of them in the Old Testament. So, hey, Jesus, out of those 613 laws, uh, which is the most important? And so he's probably expecting Jesus to say, oh, that's a, that's a good one. You got me. So there's a lot in support. And Jesus doesn't hesitate. He just says, oh, that's easy. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And so love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second is this, then love your neighbor as yourself, and there's no commandment greater than these. And so we talked about that what Jesus says before he says what he says is as important as what he says. So a lot of us may know the scripture, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But before that, he says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three entities or three expressions, but made up in one being. So you can't know the Father without knowing the Son. And you can't experience the power of the Holy Spirit without the Spirit leading you into the goodness of the Father. So different entities, but one being. So Jesus is teaching that principle. And then he says that we, because we're made in God's image, we are heart, mind, soul, and body, but we're one. So remember last week we had the different glasses there and we poured them in, the red and the orange and the yellow and the clear. And then we said, well, what if we were to try to extract that? What if we were to try to extract the orange out of that and say, well, I'm just going to love God with my heart. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray and fast and I'm going to, or, or pray, let's just say pray. I'm going to pray for three hours a day and read my Bible another hours a day, but my diet is Slim Jims and Oreos, right? And that, no, no, not yes. No, we are one. We are holistic. So if, if what we eat affects our spirit. What we eat affects sometimes our ability to hear from God. What we eat can affect our ability to pray for people. Say, ouch. But then on the other side, what, well, Pastor, I'm in, I'm in the gym. Six days, six days, CrossFit, I'm CrossFit, bro. Yeah, but are you in the Word six days? 
Like, are you feeding? I know you're feeding your muscles. I see, I see you with your jug of water. I see, we all know, we get it, you're hydrating. <laughs> you leave the meeting five times, but we get it, you're, you're hydrating. We, know, we see you eating your protein shake, but you're in church one Sunday out of seven. Like, we are holistic. You can exercise your body, but if you're not feeding your spirit, then you're going to find yourself with less energy than you thought. Our, my, this message that I'm about to preach, I was going to preach a message on our mind, but it quickly went into our emotions, and I found out how, how interconnected our mind is. What you feed your mind determines your emotions. I'm going to show this to you from God's Word. I'm gonna, some of you are going to get so free emotionally because the enemy has been attacking. The enemy has been having a field day on people's emotions over the past two and a half years. And he is going to, God is going to show you from his word some principles of how you're going to get so free emotionally. So let me, let me just teach these, these entities real quick. Again, all of this is on your notes. Your heart, the word there that Jesus uses is cardia. Cardia, that's where we get the, uh, the you know, cardiac and, and that sort of thing. The heart is the effective center of our being. It is the inner man. It's the center and the seat of spiritual life. It's the seat of thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, and endeavors. And so when we are talking about heart, primarily we're talking about your spiritual life. But how many of you see that even, even there's overlap there? into your emotions. Do you know that physiologically your heart has cellular memory just like your brain does? So this is crazy. When people get heart transplants, they actually can have different uh, tastes and different desires after their heart transplant. They get a new heart. I didn't used to like broccoli. Now I like broccoli. I used to be a morning person. Now I'm a night person. It's crazy because your heart has some of the same cellular memory that your brain does. So when we say that we think in our mind, we're also thinking in our heart. And our, they're, they're all combined, our thoughts and our emotions. Our soul, that word there is suke. It means breath. It means breath. Think of that when God breathed into Adam. He was just dust, but then he received his soul, his, the breath of God. That is what makes us a living being, not just physically, but spiritually. So here's suke, and we're talking mostly about our emotions, but your emotions can't be fully alive and fully healthy unless your spirit man is fully alive and fully healthy. That's why counseling. Counseling, I honor counseling. It's a great practice, but non-Christian counseling can only get somebody so far. It may, may be able to give you tools to deal with your emotions, but it can never heal your emotions because the core of your emotions is the breath of God. And until you receive the breath of God in your soul, then you can't be healthy emotionally. But we have too many Christians that have received the breath of God spiritually that are unhealthy and immature emotionally. So we need all of this. Say we need it all. We need it all. Your mind, Dionea, literally is to move from side to side. To move from side to side. You say, why would the, the word for mind be to move from side to side? Because that means that we are looking at every side of an issue to reach balanced thought. How many of you know we could use some balanced thought in our world today? Some wisdom, right? It's deep thought. It means reasoning, the mind as a way of thinking and feeling. You see it again. Here we're getting, we're getting to, we're getting like overlap here. Well, I thought the mind was just the way of thinking and then I feel in my heart. No, the mind feels because you got your left brain and your right brain and your left brain controls your right side and your right brain controls your left side and your left side is the more emotional and creative side and so part of your brain controls your emotions and so like all of this we are so holistic. And then strength, iscus, strength, might, power, force and ability. 
All this to say that the enemy wants us to be fractured, but God wants to bring wholeness. And so Proverbs says it like this, Proverbs 14.30 in the message translation. A sound mind makes for a robust body, but runaway emotions, runaway emotions, runaway emotions. Have you experienced some runaway emotions? Runaway emotions corrode the bones. See, what the enemy has become a master at is dropping thoughts into our mind, and those thoughts get on the runaway emotion train. If you had a thought, get on the runaway emotion train. And before you know it, it has left the station without your permission and is flying down the track out of control at about 400 miles an hour. How many of you had some train wrecks in your life, in your relationships, because of one thought that got on the wrong train and the devil's like, oh, look at that train, look at that train go. And the devil's just waving bye-bye to that train. And you have taken that emotion The runaway train emotions, thoughts, thoughts like, I wonder why he didn't speak to me. I think she's mad at me. Something bad is going to happen to you. Something bad is going to happen to your kids. Or heaven forbid somebody left you on red. Because when you text somebody... They're supposed to text you back in 0.5 seconds. And if they don't text you back in 0.5 seconds, then they're mad at me. Then they did something to offend me. And the relationship's probably spiraling out of control. And I don't, I don't know, right? It is on a runaway emotion. That train has left. And, and then they text you back. And, but, but even when they text you back, like the train, sometimes the train left. And the train, sometimes the train leaves with your words. And you've told 15 people something that happened that didn't really happen because you're just screaming out. You're just screaming on, you're screaming now on social media out of a runaway train that is not based on reality at all. And I'm telling you, the, devil, the devil's just having a field day with this. There was, a, there was a movie several years ago called Runaway Train. It was a couple of convicts in Alaska that stole some stuff, hopped on a locomotive. The engineer of the locomotive had a heart attack, falls off the train, and it's, it's gone. It's gone. That's what the, that's what the, devil, the devil wants. The devil want, See, you don't realize you're the engineer of the train. And the devil wants you to feel like your emotions are in control of you. You're in control of your emotions. You're in control of your emotions. A sound mind makes for a robust body, but runaway emotions corrode the bones. Let me say it like this on your notes. Wrong thoughts lead to runaway emotions and runaway emotions lead to tired bodies because your emotions affect you physically. If you don't think that's true, remember back to your 14-year-old self that got broken up with. You remember how you felt physically after that? Like it, it can make you almost sick physically. Emotions can make you Emotions, the wrong thoughts in your mind can lead to the wrong emotions. And those wrong emotions can lead to a lack of energy. It can lead to a lack of productivity because we're so connected. But right thoughts lead to healthy emotions and energized bodies. Several years ago when I was in London um, navigating. So in London, there's a place called King's Cross. If you've ever been to London, it's about 45 minutes from the Heathrow International Airport. And if you want to get anywhere in London, you're going through King's Cross. And so there's taxis that drop people off in front of King's Cross. There's there's bus lines that run through King's Cross, but not just bus lines, trains. Trains run through, but not just trains. There's different companies of trains that run through King's Cross. And so you may want to travel throughout the country of England in the UK. Well, that's a, that can be a separate train that you need to get on because there's also a train line that runs all the way up to Scotland or then over to Wales. And right next door, by the way, right next door is the train that takes you to Europe. So if you get on the wrong train, you may end up in the wrong country or you may end up in the wrong continent. 
it, speaking a wrong language to, be, to a place that you were not prepared to go. But there's not just taxis and there's not just buses and there's not just different train systems. There's the tube. There's the underground. There's the subway system. And so there's all of that. So you may end up in an in entirely different vehicle than you thought you were in. And all of the, see, this is a picture of all the things that are going on in your mind. Any given day, you got work things flying this way and you've got marriage things flying this way and, and, and relationships and then you've got to-do lists and you're planning for January already but you're living in August and all of these things are going through your mind and all the devil has to do in the middle of your crazy day is throw, throw one little thought and get on the wrong train and that one train that is hijacked can derail the whole system. Your mind is a train depot. Which train you put the passenger of your thoughts on determines the destination. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart. There we go again. The thought starts in our mind, but then the thought quickly goes to your heart. And as a man thinks in his heart, so he feels. It's not what it says. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. So your life, the life that you are living today is a result of the thoughts that you had yesterday or the thoughts that you had a week ago. So if you want to change your life, change your thoughts. And I want to show you from God's word that he has given you the power to change your thoughts and you're going to begin to change your thoughts and your thoughts are going to begin to change your emotions and your emotions will then change your life. Somebody say, let's go somebody give God praise because we've got the power to do that so how do we stop this runaway emotion train number one control what enters your mind control what enters your mind you've heard the saying you are what you eat same with your mind you are what you consume what are you allowing into your mind can I can I teach you how social media works just scientifically? This isn't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna teach this because I, th I thought it was fascinating. So social media is, is a business, right? And so what's the goal of any business? To make money, exactly. That's what we call amoral. It is neither good nor bad. It is good companies make good dollars for the good of society and for the good of the kingdom. Bad companies make dollars so that it's stored up for the righteous because the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. So, but, but the goal of a company is to make money. That's, that's fine. That's just the gate. That's the way the gate of business operates. So YouTube or, or social media, this is just how they make money. They're not, they're not necessary, necessarily selling anything tangibly. What they're selling, their product is time. So when you're on YouTube, you're viewing the ads, and then YouTube is getting money from their, their sponsors. Does that make sense? So if you're on YouTube, they're making money. If you click off of YouTube, they're not making money. Just simple business principle, right? And so we've got their goal was to make money, and the way they make money is time. Now here's where it gets a little, a little sticky. See, you won't, say, you won't see this on YouTube's website. You won't see this phrase. This is not their, their official motto, but it's their unofficial motto. If it's enraging, it's engaging. If it's enraging, it's engaging. So guess how YouTube, according to the algorithm of their business model, gets you to spend more time on YouTube is they trigger the emotion of anger, of, of rage, of being upset. And if you're upset, then you're going to spend more time on you. So how do they do that? Because you didn't get on you. You didn't, you, you didn't wake up this morning and type into YouTube, search things that make me mad. You didn't, you didn't do that. But how many of you been on social media for a few minutes and ended up mad? Right? So how, so how do they do that? If it's enraging, it's engaging. It's, it's the 1% rule. This is a rule that social media companies operate by. It's the 1% rule. And so 
what happens is the first YouTube video that you watch is a result of what you have typed in. So you move, let's just uh, example, completely random example. Let's say that you moved into a house five years ago and there was a simple plumbing thing in the downstairs sink that you should have fixed five years ago but that you haven't because you don't know how to fix it and you don't want to pay, pay a plumber to fix it. And so let's say that it uh, it's, remains unfixed just completely hypothetically. And so you pull up YouTube and you type in how to fix my bathroom, my bathroom sink. Well, you watch that first video, right? And if you're good, you click off of that and you fix the sink. But do you remember, some of you will remember this. Some of you will remember the day that was at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning. Remember when networks went off the air? Do you remember that? Like that night, that Friday night when you had a friend sleeping over and you got to stay up really late and you watched everything there was to watch. And then what did they do? They played Star Spangled Banner, and then it cut off. And I, I, know, I know the millennials are like, what? They turned it off? I know Gen Z is like, no, that didn't happen. It did. It was just then static. Um, they turned it off. And so YouTube doesn't just say, hey, thank you for watching our video. The end, right? What do they do? They have a whole nother list of videos that, that then it's just, it's just one degree. It's just one degree. So here are the top five things that are destroying your bathroom sink. You'll never guess what number one is. <laughs> no, I need to fix the sink, but what is destroying my bathroom? I got to find out. Like, that's just being a good steward, right? So what if I fix my sink, but I don't know what's destroying my sink? And so I got I to gotta click on that. I got to find out what's destroying my sink. And two and a half hours later, you are down this trail where, where aliens have overtaken the plumbing industry and they make their way into your home via pipes. And if you don't do right, like have you been there? One, de one degree, one degree. Listen, I'm not, mad, I'm not mad at social media. It's a medium. It's amoral. Let me help you. Let me help you with this. Let me give you two things. Learn how to be on social media without being in social media. Learn how to use social media without social media using you. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the algorithm of this world. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Second thing is this. So the first thing is control what thoughts. What are you consuming? What conversations are you hosting? Well, I can't control what people say around me, really. To it, I know not 100%, but sometimes, right? You can, we control the media that we're consuming. We control all of, all of these different things. So to the best of our ability, what we want to do is not even let the thought get into King's Cross. Let's not, let's not even try, let's not let it in here. But how many of you know that thoughts pop up in here, whether internal or external, that you did not invite? Whether it's a conversation, whether it's a comment, whether it's like, boom, it's, it's there, right? So just say it's there. Say it's there. It's there. So when the thought is there, before it hops onto the runaway emotion train, we've got to control it. Number two is this. Control what train the thoughts get on. Control what train the thoughts get on. 2 Corinthians 10.5. Cast down imaginations. Cast down imaginations. See, that's what you have the power to do. Those thoughts left unattended become imaginations. What are imaginations? Our imaginations are when you add your fear and your worry to the thought. Sometimes it's not the thought, it's the problem. Sometimes it's the imagination that you add to the thought that's the problem. Problem. And the Bible says that we have the power to cast down the imaginations. And by the way, while you're at it, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought, say every thought, bring into captivity every thought and make it obedient to Christ. See, God created our bodies in a way to purify 
That's the way he created. So let me explain it like this and, and, and we'll pray. There are toxins all around us, probably more than we want to know. So we walk outside, there's pollution. Uh, in our food, even if you scrub your food good, there's some toxins, there's some things in there that shouldn't be in there. And by the way, do you know that, that your body even, even can create toxins within there? And so there's a, there's a lot of toxins, both internally and externally, that we are consuming on a regular basis. And so some of these toxins leave us sick, but really the amount of toxins that come into our body, we should be sick all the time. Like, we should be sick all the time. We're not. Why are we not sick all the time? Because God created your body to purify and cleanse the toxins. Three organs in particular, your lungs, your liver, and your kidneys. And so let's just talk about your kidneys. So right now, there are some things in your bloodstream that shouldn't be there that if left unattended will make you sick physically but guess what God created God created your kidneys and so as long as every bit of blood do you hear me church as long as every bit of blood passes through your kidneys and your kidneys are able to filter out the toxins then you're going to live healthy physically as long as all of these toxins that the devil is trying to put in your mind all of these toxins that the world is trying to put in your mind as long as they pass through the cross, as long as I pass all of my thoughts through the cross, the cross is what purifies. The cross is what cleanses. The cross is what, so even if you take those things in, God created a system. King's cross. King's cross. I love the name. If you want to get anywhere in London, you got to go through the King's cross. We got to begin to take control out of our, of our thoughts and of our mind. If you want to get anywhere, you got to pass through the cross. You got to pass through the king's cross. I know I didn't, I didn't put that thought there. But it's got to pass through the blood of Jesus. It's got to pass through the cross. All of those toxic thoughts that are in your head, they can become, they, the toxins can be removed in the name of Jesus. The unforgiveness can be removed in the name of Jesus. The offense can be removed in the name of Jesus. The hatred can be removed in the name of Jesus. The self-hatred can be removed in the name of Jesus. The bad memories can be removed in the name of Jesus. Pass through the blood, pass through the cross. Pass through the cross, heads bowed and eyes closed in the house today. How many of you would say, that's me, Pastor. I got some, I got some toxic thoughts that I just want to pass through the blood. Would you just lift up your hand right now and say, that's me. I got some, the enemy's been battling in my mind. He's been battling in my mind. He's been putting some thoughts in my mind and they've been hopping on the runaway emotion train. Sure, sure. Can we just stand all across this auditorium right now? Before we pray for people at the front, can we exercise the power that God said that he gave us to cast down vain imaginations? Can we do that right now just as, a, just as a people? Come on, let's just close our eyes all across this place. I think if we're honest, we all got them. We all got some thoughts that haven't passed through the cross. So if you're, if you're able to do this, if you're open to this, would you just place your hand on your head and say, Jesus, Jesus, purify my thoughts, purify my mind. I, don't want, I take control of those thoughts that are hopping on the runaway emotion train. I take authority over those in the name of Jesus. I know somebody hurts you, but that memory doesn't have to hop on the runaway emotion train every day of your life. I see God shutting down that train. I see him closing that station down. I see him healing your emotions right now. Come on, allow those thoughts to just pass through the cross. Allow them to pass through the cross. Allow them to pass through the cross. Come on, let's, let's just allow those memories to pass through the cross. 
a lot of those memories. Band, I, I just, here's what I want to do. I just want you to play. Would you just play a melody? Would you just play kind of medium, not real, not real soft, but not real loud? Would you just, would you just kind of flow a little bit? What I just sense is that the Holy Spirit is going to allow some thoughts. Let's not be, let's not be in a rush. Y'all, this is, you're, you're about to enter a toxic world. You know that. You know the enemy's going to try to bombard you with thoughts that are not from, not from the Lord. You know how the enemy's been attacking your mind and attacking your emotions. Can we just take a few moments and allow our thoughts to be washed by the blood of Jesus? For some of you, the, the, the Lord is going to bring to, it, a, it's going to be a painful memory. Just take it to the cross. It's going to be the time when somebody said something negative you, to you. Just take it through the cross. Just take it to the cross. Pass through the, the cross. I see the toxins leaving in the name of Jesus. Just let it pass through. Let's just wait on the Lord for a moment. For some of you, the enemy has just really been working your mind over. And what I feel like the Lord's saying is, is like, look, that's not, that's not a level of like spirituality. That's like sometimes, um, like it's the closer you get to God, the more the enemy will try to attack your mind. And so I just want to, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a call. For those of you that just want somebody to lay their hands on you, and we're just going to gently lay our hand upon your head as a point of contact. It's done in the Bible many times. Hands-on ministry, we're going to lay our hands on you. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus over every thought, over every thought. I believe the fire of God's going to hit your mind. I believe he's going to purify. I believe you're going to walk out of here changed. And so we're going to make a call for that. We're going to worship one more time. Pastor Harrison is going to come up and close us in prayer and give us a, an official dismissal, but we're just going to continue ministry as the Holy Spirit leads. So right now, as the worship team just begins to lead you, if you would say, Pastor, Pastor, I, I, I just, the enemy's been attacking my mind. I've been having thoughts that I don't want to have. I don't want to live on the runaway emotion train. And I just want the power of God. I want the power of God to overtake my mind, my heart, and my emotions. Would you just make your way down here and we're going to pray for you. Let's just continue to worship. For those of you who are at the altars, don't feel a rush to move or anything like that. Continue to be ministered to right there where you are. For the rest of you standing around, I wanted to not leave this moment without approaching you and reminding you, for those of you who are Christians in the room who follow Jesus, uh, reminding you of the story that sets our lives apart from that of the world. And then for those of you who, who don't follow Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to step into that today, to say that I truly want to follow Jesus. And you might even ask and be thinking, uh, why, why would I need to follow Jesus? And, and the truth is that based on what the Bible outlines for us, is that humans, as, as we are as humanity, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what is, what is sin? Sin is to say anything outside of God's law that is against his character and his will for us in this world. And so we can all agree that we can look out into the world and say, yes, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But, but Jesus in his grace, God in his grace and his love sent his son Jesus who is one and the same with God to take our to take human form just like us. And he walked life and faced the same troubles and trials and tribulations that you did. In fact, the Bible says that he faced everything possible that we could have faced, but he never sinned. He never did anything against the will of God. He never did anything against the commandments of God, but he followed God in every part of his life. And why would he have done that so he could go to the cross and so he could die? so that you don't have to take the punishment for your sins and so that you can live in what the Bible outlines and calls life abundant. And that can begin today for you. And so Jesus would say to you today, just because you've lived in sin, just because you have continually followed the ways of the world, that's another good way to understand it. You have not followed the ways of Jesus. You followed the ways of the world. But today, 
you'd like to say, I want to follow the ways of Jesus. I no longer want to give my allegiances over to the world, but I want to give my allegiance to Jesus and his kingdom. And so I want to give you an opportunity today. If you've never said that, yes, you want to follow Jesus with all of your heart, with all of your life, I want to give you that opportunity today. I'm not going to have anybody close their eyes or anything like that, but I am just going to give you a second to think about it because this is a life-changing decision for you. And so nobody's going to close their eyes, but on the count of three, I'm just going to ask you, if you want to make that decision today and you want to say, I am ready to give all my allegiance, shift all of my allegiances in my life to place my allegiances in Jesus, then I just want you to raise your hand right there where you are, and we're just going to celebrate with you. That's all. So on the count of three, I want you to do that one, two, three. Just put your hand up for me. Look over here in the back of me. Anybody, just raise your hand for me. Straight up in the front. Anybody, just raise your hand for me. Down here on the floor, just shoot your hand up. Praise God. Praise God. Family, can we celebrate one that wants to place their allegiance in Jesus today and step into salvation with God? Is there anybody else here? We don't leave anybody alone, and so we're going to partner with this one right here who is saying yes to Jesus for the first time today. So would we say, could we say a corporate prayer together as a family? Would you just repeat after me? Heavenly Father, I turn away from my sin, and I accept what you did for me on the cross. I place all my allegiance in you. Holy Spirit, come into my life and transform me into your image. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we celebrate one more time with our new brother in the family of Jesus? Well, I hope you enjoyed the service. And if you made a decision today to follow Jesus, we would love to know. All you have to do is text ALIVE to 94000. We have some resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey of following Him. Well, it's good to be back. We made it back. We did. We went out on a vacation. We did. And Travel. It, was a, it was a lot of driving. Lots of driving. And I'm glad to be out of the car. Yeah. Yes. I think driving is sometimes a lot more difficult than the older you get. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, it's more expensive, too. Yeah. Because I won't drive straight through anymore. No. I can't do it. i got to sleep in a hotel with a bed. Has to be a nice one. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You don't? Uh, what? Where would you? What would you do? Just drive all night? You just go to the rest area. No. Nope. And you sleep in the car. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. Now I'll have like I'm getting old. Like I said, I have like my neck hurts, my back hurts. Yeah. I even have to stop just to like get out and move and some like move after sitting in the car in the same position. Yeah. In it's hard to walk too. I walk like bent over and walking. It takes me a few minutes to... To kind of get motion back? Yeah, it's like my knees, yeah. my ankles, everything hurts. Yeah. It takes a good 30 seconds at least, maybe more. I think the older you get, the more you feel that. Young people, I remember when I was in college, I would drive like 24 hours straight and it would yeah, be even longer. Too. You could do the whole drive, but... I did too, but then I got smart. And then, I don't know that it's smart. I think you mm -hmm. just get tired of doing that. I don't think it's safe. Probably not. Okay. I got smart. Yeah, it's probably smarter to not do that. So don't do that. Mm -hmm. Instead, stop. Find a bed. Or listen, if you don't have money, you just do what you gotta do. Do it. To get it done. Mm -hmm. If you have a decent sized car, you can sleep in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess you could. I like Unless that. you got lots of people. Then it's like a heater. Or you could just fly. Places. Yeah. You could do That's that. a good option. Don't drive. Don't drive. It's fine. We have too many kids. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of plane tickets. We have a lot of kids. Yeah. Well, if you're traveling, be smart. Yeah. Stop. Find a bed. Hey, maybe they're in bed watching this. I bet some people watch this in bed. Don't watch this while driving. That's bad for you. Yeah. You can listen to it. You can listen. Yeah. But don't watch. Mm -hmm. Accident. I think it might even be legal. I'm talking to you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Tom, I see you. No. No, sir. Do you really know a Tom that watches it while he drives? I'm right now. Tom!